Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you all the interesting and unique features of the Apple Newton MessagePad 2100. Now, if you've been following this series that we've been doing, you know that the Newton is about an 11-year-old device. It's the last Newton that Apple ever made that they came up with. Um, it came out in 1997 and it cost $1,000 and uh, the purpose of this of this video series is to see how far we've come and yet how far we haven't come because there is a lot of things that the Apple Newton can do a lot of really intelligent features that we still don't see on mobile devices of today okay so what is the Apple Newton well the way I think about it is like a really advanced notepad and you'll see what I mean by that in a second I'm gonna start by turning it on and there's a switch in the upper left corner and you probably won't be able to see the screen, so I'm going to turn on the backlight, and hopefully the backlight won't burn out by the time I'm done with this video. Uh, the backlight's kind of this ugly green color, and it, there's a little hum coming from the device, but it serves the purpose of uh, bringing, the, bringing some light to the device when you're in a dark room or something like that, because obviously it's not backlit like a traditional um, LCD is. So... Let's start out. The, the, the kind of desktop for the Apple Newton is the notepad application. That's where you always go back to, whether you're in, you're in contacts or calendar or you're faxing something or anything like that. And I'm going to make a new note and show you some things that this can do and how you input uh, data into this. So, quite simply, we can start off by just naturally writing. And I have to change the mode down here to text. And now I'm going to write on the screen, today is Tuesday. Now, looks like the word's wrong, and I'll show you how to correct that in a second. You can write anywhere on the screen, and it will always show up where the cursor is. So I could have done today is Tuesday, I could have done today is Tuesday, and so on and so forth. Now, you see I've misspelled the word, or the Newton has misspelled t Tuesday. So the way I correct it is quite simply by writing on top of it. So that U needs to be an A, so I'm going to do an A, changes to an A, that period needs to be a Y. So I'm going to write on top of that, and it corrects it. So let's say I want to delete the word Tuesday. How do you do it? Well, kind of like in a real notepad, you scribble it out. So I'm going to scribble out Tuesday. You get this little animation and this whoosh sound, and it's off the screen. And you can do that with the whole entire sentence, or just one word or one letter. So it's a really smart way of just simply removing or deleting what you've just written in. Now you can also type with the on-screen keyboard, though I'm sure most people prefer to use the, uh, the handwriting recognition. So if I type, uh, today is Tuesday, it's a really nice keyboard actually, it's quite large, it makes this annoying sound every time you type on it, but uh, you, know, you can turn off the sound obviously. To close the keyboard, and this is kind of a deviation from other mobile devices, the close button is in the bottom right, and you'll find that to be the case in most of the screens on the Newton. So now, once we have text on the screen, we can do some things with it. We can move it around, we can copy and paste it, and other sort of things. First thing we have to do is select the text, and the way we do that is by clicking and holding, and then dragging the selection line through the text, or the shape, as we'll see soon, that you want to manipulate. So, I'm going to tap down, and draw through. Now I can move this around if I want. I can place this anywhere on the page. If I want to copy it, or duplicate it, I double tap, and slide. So watch this. Double tap and slide. Double tap and slide. The iPhone still doesn't have copy and paste, but the Newton can do it here. And let's say I want to undo that last copy. There's an undo button on the bottom here, but unfortunately it only goes back one undo compared to you know other devices and uh, you know on, on your computer you can go back many different times. So I'm going to erase everything that's on the screen here so I can show you another feature. Now another thing that you can do in, in the Newton is sketch and the Newton will automatically smooth out your shapes because you know you can't most people can't draw a perfect circle or a perfect square so if we go down here to where I changed the uh, the, the input method I'm going to go to shapes the cursor goes away I'm gonna draw a square to the best of my ability and it automatically smooths it out I'm gonna draw a circle to the best of my ability it automatically smooths it out now what's really neat is that you can move around these shapes and resize them. So I'm going to select it, just like I told you how to select before. Just draw through the item. And because this is now a vector, watch what I can do. Yeah, this is a really good tool for someone who does a lot of sketching or drawing. Um, I can draw a triangle and it will be smoothed out, although that didn't work out too well. Let me try that again. Perfect. 
and we can tap and drag one of the corners. Now we can also move some of these. So let's say we want to move the circle and the triangle. We move the selection line through both items and we can slide them around on the screen. So the net effect of this is that you can mix text and shapes and drawing so that, let me show you something that I, I made earlier. And I'll take you through the screen in a minute. Um, where is floor plan, floor plan, here it is, floor plan. You get something like this, which is a really nice looking uh, mix of text and shapes and everything like this. And from here, you can fax a note. You can fax a note, you can email a note, you can beam a note. And the way you do that is that in the upper right corner, there's a picture of a mailbox. Now, I can't do any of this because I don't have the right equipment, nor do I have... Why isn't it responding? Hmm. Here we go. Nor do I have another Newton to beam to, but here we have print note, fax note, and beam. And I'm assuming if you have the right uh, capabilities and the right hardware hooked up to this, you could also email the note. Now, I showed you the screen down here. Uh, when I press the dot, it shows me all of the different entries in notes that I have right now. And if you're in calendar, pressing on that dot will show you all the different calendar entries you have. And you can flip through them with the up and down buttons. Or I can just make a new note by clicking new and going to note. We can also choose a few other things from this note application. We can do a new checklist. So we can say, you know, um, milk. And we're in the wrong mode. Let me change it. We're in, we're in shape still, so I need to change to text. So let me do milk. And I'm going to go down an item, uh, cheese. Say we're going shopping. And then when you're done with them, you can check them off and that sort of thing. A really intuitive way to, to make a list, I think. And let's go to the next one, which is outline. This is really great for a student. So, um, biography, got the word right. So let's go down a, uh, an indent, and we'll type another item in the list. And from here, we can go down another item, and so on and so forth. Now, something that's really neat is the Newton's integration with the notepad with the other PIM programs, such as names and dates, which we'll cover in a minute, that lets you do calendar and contacts. If I write lunch with Brandon, watch what happens. And I am in the right mood, so I'm just going to do uh, lunch. That's probably not going to come out very well, so I'm going to scribble that out, although I could have corrected it. Um, lunch with... Brandon. And now I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to the assist button on the bottom. The assist button responds to certain commands. So it knows that I want to schedule a meeting so it brings up a new meeting card and all I have to do is input the date and the time and it's already got the title lunch with Brandon. Pretty smart, right? Windows Mobile can't do that. Um, let me scribble that out. You can do other things, such as call people. So I'm going to do call Bob. There's a Bob in my contact list. So I'm going to do call Bob. And of course, it's showing, showing up where the cursor is. I'm going to highlight it, do the assist button, and look, look what comes up. Bob Anderson, his contact card. If I press the call button, it will call Bob. And no, this doesn't have a phone, but the idea is that you hold up your phone to the speaker, and you hear it dialing it will dial Bob Anderson for you. And I'm going to close this and note where the close button is down here in the bottom right corner. There's other things that you can do with this assist function. So we can ha set a reminder to do something. So remind me to, um, I don't know, uh, I'm just going to type remind me and you'll see what it does. Remind me. And I'm going to highlight it. Go to assist. And what you get is a to-do task automatically comes up. Pretty smart. Okay, so let's take a look at the other PIM applications. Down here we have names, which is basically like a Rolodex or contacts list. And we can sort the names by category, and here are all the contacts that I have. Now let's say I want to add a new one. I love the way that you add a contact in the, the Newton uh, operating system. It's just so fast and so intuitive. So I'm going to write new person, and let's, see, I, let's say I want to write a new contact for Bill Gates. I know his phone number, I know his name. Look how fast I can enter this. Ready? Done. 
Talk about a fast way to interact with the device. It's completely natural. It, it, it misspelled the name Gates, so I'm going to change that to a G. Whoop. And that should be a T. There we go. And it's added. Perfect. Now let's go into the Dates application, which is the calendar application. We can change view by clicking the Show button here. We can go to a Week view. We can go to a month view, and just like in any PIM application, if you click on a day, it will take you to that day. We can click our cursor at 1 o'clock, and we can start typing anywhere on the screen, just like we could do in the Notes application. So let's say I want to have lunch with Bob. So I'm going to do lunch with Bob. And we're done. There it is. Lunch with Bob has been made. And as I mentioned, this dot in the calendar application will draw up a list of all of your different appointments. Just like in notes application, it will bring up a list of all of your different notes. So it's a really great way to kind of see in one glance the appointments that you have over the next period of time. Now I want to go into the extras button because there are a few other programs that is on the Newton Message Pad 2100. Um, here we have something called styles, which will allow you to change the kind of style that shows up on the screen when it converts your handwriting to text or when you type with the on-screen keyboard. So we can do bold, italics, underline. We can change the size. Right now it's on 18 point. We can even change the font. There are only three fonts, but, you know, that's, that's appreciated. We have casual, fancy, and simple. And we can also change the thickness of the pen. So right now it's on a 2. As you can see, it's kind of thin. If we change it to a 4, much thicker. Some people may prefer, prefer that so that they can see it on the screen. Going back into extras, we have a simple clock. And we have also a preferences screen, which doesn't let you do, do that many things. Um, you can change how loud the volume is. Uh, you can configure a modem. Specify how it's synchronized with your computer and that sort of thing. Even adjust the handwriting recognition a little bit. You can specify how closely spaced your writing is. And you can also check off if you want it to do cursive or if you want it to do print. And I have it set to print because I can't do cursive very well. Okay, back in extras, we have a formulas program, which will allow us to do things like loan amortization, uh, net present value, currency exchange, date calculator. So useful things that may be of use on the go to the mobile professional. We have a simple calculator. Uh, we can change the time zone that we're in. And we can see a list of all the calls we've made, and you know, recently we've, call, we've called Bob Anderson, and why would you want to see this on a device that doesn't even have a phone? Well, you could want to write a note on the call so that the next time um, you call Bob, you could say, oh, last time we talked about the West Coast account, or something like that. And over here on the bottom, we have some system statistics. So we have the amount of battery that's currently remaining. And I have to say, the battery on the Newton lasts a very long time. And I'm sure I'm, the batteries in here are very old, but uh, this device doesn't seem very power hungry. Contrast, we can change the contrast of the screen. And it makes this ticking sound. And over here, we have volume. Because as you've heard throughout the demonstration, it makes a lot of sounds. Now, there's actually screen rotation built into this, which is great. Uh, if we click on rotate, we can rotate it in any direction. So I'm going to go to the left. And it takes a minute to redraw. And what's interesting is that it makes really good use of the screen real estate. So it places the icons on the left side. And if you want, you can actually have the buttons go on the right. Like so. In conclusion, the Apple Newton Message Pad is a fantastic note-taking device. Um, every time I go to a convention or a conference, I bring along one of these notepads. And you know what? It's a really inconvenient and not uh, organized way to keep track of my notes because I can't search for text. I can't organize them by category. It's just a big mess of, of yellow pages. And the Newton really would be a good remedy to that. Um, back in 1997 when this came out, I don't think the world was ready for an advanced note-taking device, especially when it was trying to be a PDA, communication device, note-taking uh, device, all in one. The world was just not ready for it. I guess the modern-day equivalent of this would be a tablet PC because it's a larger form factor. Tablet PC doesn't fit in your pocket. 
and it does a lot with natural text input. So that's it for the video series on the Apple Newton MessagePad 2100. I hope you enjoyed this step, step back in time at a device that really helped pave the way for mobile technology and mobile devices that we have today. Uh, that's it for now.